The idea that patterns and symmetry lie at the heart of the structure of matter dates all the way back to classical Greece. The philosopher Empedocles suggested that matter is formed of four elements, earth, air, fire and water. And in the 4th century BC, the philosopher Plato took this proposal and produced a possible geometrical theory of matter based around it. In his dialogue, the Timaeus, Plato proposes that each of the elements, earth, air, fire and water, has fundamental components that are in the shape of the regular polyhedra, and this is why, why the regular polyhedra are now known as the platonic solids. In Plato's scheme, each of the elements was identified with tiny components in the shape of one of the regular polyhedra. So fire was composed of tiny tetrahedra, air was composed of tiny octahedra, water was composed of tiny icosahedra, and earth was composed of tiny cubes. And the fifth regular polyhedron, the dodecahedron, Plato identified with the structure of the cosmos as a whole. And the idea seems to have been that the heavens were formed of a fifth ethereal element, unlike the four terrestrial elements. And this idea was later taken on by Aristotle and the fifth element became known as the quintessence. So it had a sort of spiritual dimension to it. Now, this idea of Plato and later Aristotle doesn't really bear any relationship to the true structure of matter, but it was very influential down the centuries. It's influenced many philosophers and early scientists, most notably Johannes Kepler. Now this is quite a remarkable idea that symmetry and patterns lie at the heart of nature because when we look around us there's not much sign that this is actually the case. Nevertheless, Symmetry is, lies at the heart of modern theoretical physics. The whole of physics is really understood in terms of symmetry and patterns. So what is symmetry? What do we mean when we say that an object has a certain symmetry? Well, the simplest illustration is with a simple object such as the regular hexagon. If we rotate a regular hexagon around its centre through 60 degrees, the regular hexagon looks exactly the same after the rotation as it did when we started. So we say this is a symmetry of the regular hexagon. And similarly, if we rotate the hexagon through multiples of 60 degrees, we again find that the hexagon looks exactly the same. So these are again symmetries of the regular hexagon. Another example is a reflection symmetry. If we place a mirror connecting two opposite vertices of the regular hexagon and reflect the hexagon in the mirror, then one side of the hexagon is swapped over for the other side of the hexagon and vice versa. So the regular hexagon looks exactly the same. So this is again a symmetry of the regular hexagon. My first book, Higgs Force, includes all the historical and scientific background leading up to the discovery of the Higgs boson at the Large Hadron Collider. So it includes a survey of how we've come to understand the structure of matter and particle physics, and our search for patterns and symmetry in the laws of nature. Now in the first chapter, to illustrate the idea of symmetry, I used the kaleidoscope which is a toy that was invented by the Scottish physicist David Brewster in the 19th century. Now it was an instant massive success and loads of kaleidoscopes were sold, but unfortunately Brewster himself didn't make much, much money because his idea was copied by lots of other people who were much more business-like than he was. Brewster's original kaleidoscope was a tube containing two rectangular mirrors set at a 60 degree angle so that beads at the end of the tube were reflected to produce a pattern with hexagonal symmetry. And I've created this animation using a virtual kaleidoscope with the same symmetry 
as the original kaleidoscope of Brewster. Many kaleidoscopes, such as those that you might buy in a toy shop today, include a third rectangular mirror. With the three mirrors arranged so that they have a cross-section that is an equilateral triangle. And these kaleidoscopes produce patterns with the same symmetry as a tessellation of regular hexagons or equilateral triangles. And I've produced this second animation to show what the patterns would look like when looking through one of these kaleidoscopes. possible to create other types of kaleidoscopes with the mirrors arranged to produce patterns with the same symmetry as the regular polyhedra. So here I've produced a computer generated animation with a virtual kaleidoscope made of three triangular mirrors and this produces patterns with the same symmetry as a regular icosahedron. It's possible to develop the theme of kaleidoscopes further. I've produced a series of three ray traced animations produced using virtual kaleidoscopes formed of four triangular mirrors. And these mirrors are arranged in the form of a tetrahedron with the virtual camera actually inside the tetrahedron. So in this first animation all the edges are produced by multiple reflections of a single edge inside the tetrahedron. And this produces an image of a space filling combination of polyhedra known to mathematicians as a honeycomb. And this, this first animation shows the edges of a honeycomb of regular hexagonal prisms. This second computer generated animation based on a tetrahedral kaleidoscope shows a honeycomb of truncated octahedra.
The third and final animation that I've produced using a virtual kaleidoscope in the form of a tetrahedron produces this honeycomb of cuboctahedra and octahedra. There's more information about kaleidoscopes and how these computer-generated animations were produced on the interactive companion to Higgs Force. This is a CD-ROM called Higgs Force Interactive and it includes a wealth of other material as well including other animations and puzzles and text that goes a bit beyond what is in the book itself. So thank you for watching. And don't forget to click the subscribe button. And if you've liked the video, please give us a thumbs up on the like button as well. And do join us again soon for more adventures on the Cosmic Mystery Tour.